aliens come down from Mars and are horny for Bitcoin and hack all of our wallets and steal our Bitcoin in advance of the halving. To be honest, I think that's one of the stupider things I've ever heard. It's not bearish if the market goes down to 5k or even 4.8 or 4.5. It's just that it's going to be an accumulation period. Uh, 5k is about the most bearish scenario that I could think of. I don't see a reason that we would return to, you know, the 3,000 lows. Hi everyone, my name is Giovanni. Welcome to our weekly crypto market show. Today with us, crypto trader Michael van der Pop and for the first time on our channel, Scott Melker, better known on Twitter as the Wolf of All Streets. How are you doing, guys? Doing great, doing great. Thank you for having me. Yes, stable, thanks. Bitcoin has been struggling to establish a strong support on the $7,000 benchmark. Traders now point at the Fibonacci retracement indicator as a sign that Bitcoin is likely to retest the low $5,000 soon before seeing another rally. Do you agree with this analysis? At this point, I think the market is just in between levels in which we have been ranging around the 6.6 to 7.4k zone for like three weeks now, two, three weeks. Uh, basically indecisive on the markets, which way we want to go. If we lose 6.6 .6 to 6.8k as a zone, I'm assuming we are going to test the lower 5ks. Um, but given that we've got an halving coming up pretty soon, I think we should see some more FOMO going into that event. And then we are just going to test the 7, 6, 7, 8 and then go down. So um, I'm midterm a little bit bearish on Bitcoin. Short term, we could see some FOMO given that we've just bounced from 6.6K. Um, it's just indecisive. Scott, what, do you agree with this analysis? Do you, do you have your own? Uh, you know, I'm not one to really make bold price predictions far in advance. It's just not my style. I trade the charts sort of level to level. Um, you know, if you are a Fibonacci trader, there's a couple assumptions I assume that you have to make here. One is that, you know, we're, I'm assuming they're talking about the move from roughly 3,800 back up to 7,400. So uh, that level at f around five grand would be, uh, 5K would be, you know, the 61.8% or golden, golden pocket retracement. So that would make sense. But you have to assume then that 7,400 was the high. Uh, and I agree with Michael, you know, there's no reason right now we haven't lost any key support. Uh, I don't see 7K as, you know, a key level as you sort of mentioned it. I think that it's now ranging after a significant move up and consolidating. So, you know, right now, nothing would surprise me, but 5K is not even remotely on my radar. You know, I think that uh, we would have to see quite a few things happen before I would expect 5K to be a significant level. So what's the most bearish scenario that you can think about right now, if, in, if it's not 5K? Uh, 5K is about the most bearish scenario that I could think of. I don't see a reason that we would return to, you know, the 3000 lows. I think that there were specific exchange events that had nothing to do with the fundamentals of um, Bitcoin itself that caused price to go there. You know, I believe that on the drop, the first half of that drop was, you know, institutional selling and whale moves, whatever you want to call it, you know, risk off uh, people selling their Bitcoin because it was a liquid, liquid asset to cover losses in other places. But then, you know, the, there's pretty good evidence that the second leg of that down was a result of BitMEX's liquid, liquidation engine completely spazzing and, and breaking down. So I don't, you know, really account for that movement down to three grand. I don't think it was meant to happen. It could have gone to zero if they hadn't have shut it off. So. You know, if you step away from the charts, I think that uh, that was sort of the back leg of the big drop was somewhat absurd and we've corrected. So looking at a chart using those levels is a bit suspect. Michael, do you have anything to add? Well, um, it's not bearish if the market goes down to 5K or even 4.8 or 4.5. It's just that it's going to be an accumulation period. So a real bearish scenario would be if we start to make new lows. Correct. I don't see that happening in the short term. Um, I just see Bitcoin going into an accumulation phase um, and just seeing some FOMO going towards the halving. So calling it like a real bearish scenario would be that we're going towards uh, 2K, but I'm just not seeing that happening uh, in the short term. I agree. I agree. I think, you know, even 5K is just a healthy retracement, like you yeah, said. It's just backtesting levels we have yeah. just uh, just had. And what about a, a bullish scenario? Like, what's the most optimistic scenario that you can think about, um, Scott? Uh, I think, like you said, I think on, on the monthly chart, certainly the 7,777, coincidentally, a strange number, but that level, 
uh, much like 6666 actually, uh, has been very key. So, you know, I think that uh, I have somewhat of an expectation that we'll at least test that level if we get above that. And I think we can start talking about, you know, the low 8,000s where the impulsive move down on March 12th began. Uh, and like I said, I don't want to get too far ahead. Like uh, right now, I see no good reason to start talking about all time highs or 14, 15 Ks again. It's possible, but you know, I think I'll be getting ahead of ourselves. So right now I would say, you know, mid to high 7,000s. And then if that happens to break, you know, the low, low to mid 8,000s. Mm -hmm. I like your down to earth predictions. So go, moving on to the next question. Last week, we saw a recovery in the stock market with the S&P 500 gaining 12%. Some investors are already thinking it is a it's a good time to buy. Others think that the market hasn't fully factored in the damage caused by the COVID-19 and that the bottom is still to come. What is your personal take on, on this issue, Scott? Uh, I'm very bearish on the stock market. I have been. I've been shorting it aggressively since the very top. Every time it bounces, I've sold into it and uh, I haven't been proven wrong yet. If you want to talk about it technically, you know, it's a insanely large impulsive move, especially for the stock market to have dropped as far and as fast as it did. And so for it to bounce back up here, a 50% retracement, that's something you expect and you see on every chart historically after every impulsive move. So to me, this looks more like a dead cat bounce or just a reaction to the aggressiveness of the move down. Uh, and in no way does it look like a reversal. Now, of course, I could be proven wrong and infinite QE is certainly helpful when you know that the market is being manipulated on the level that it is. But if you take a look at the chart, this entire move back up has been on decreasing volume and every single daily candle has less buying than the daily candle before. That is a classic sign of bearish consolidation, not of a reversal. So you always, if the price bounces, if the price and the volume are not in agreement, then you expect continuation. Uh, if you want to look at the macro factors here beyond the, the Fed and the obvious manipulation by the government, GDP is projected to drop this quarter more than it did in the entire Great Depression. I mean, that's an astounding fact. We're talking about 30, 40% decrease in GDP in a quarter. We've already seen 22 million jobs lost in the United States in less than a month, which is almost double the Great Depression's unemployment. There's no demand. Everybody's sitting at home. Nobody's buying anything. There's no supply, nothing shipping. They're killing pigs and burying crops because they have nobody to sell them to. This is an unprecedented situation. The economy is completely screwed. And if the market continues to rise, it will only because, be because the Fed is buying in some manner. That's what I think. Michael, do you also think that was a dead cat bounce? Yeah, well, I mean, um, if we go back in time and with the crypto markets, we have seen uh, a whole cycle in the past three years. And I just get the feeling that I've, I've, I've published a bearish tweet on uh, Amazon yesterday and I got just roasted by it <laughs> uh, because people are so in that stock right now and they ex expect the stock to just go up and up and up th which makes me feel like it's the same market as bitcoin december 2017 in which people stop to believe that things will go down because of the economy and just start to continue moving upwards so what i call this is the big short 2.0 and there's I, if you go towards the coronavirus i think there are two big groups one group is expecting the coronavirus to just vanish away within a few weeks and the economy will just start off back again through a switch. And there's a group expecting the economy and the coronavirus to be staying around for a few years in which the economy will just be uh, just crushed. Um, I'm in the last group as I just don't see any slowing down in the coronavirus at all. I see countries accelerating back again. The UK just announced that they are going to lock down stuff for three weeks more. So the economy will just be destroyed and it's just a matter of time until people start to realize that companies won't really reach their targets and then things start to flip over. So I think it's a dead cat bounce and we're just in for way more trouble on the, on the, on the markets. So you don't only expect these uh, um, gains to be short uh, living, but also you expect new lows. This whole move up is not sustainable. It's just not. The jobless games came out today, 5.2 million, which is 22 million right now and about 16% unemployment rate in the States right now. Markets go up. 
that's just not sustainable through which I believe that the longer the coronavirus stays around, the harder the impact will be on the economy and the economy will just lag behind. So within a few months, we will just be crashing back down is what I believe. Bitcoin has been showing a strong correlation with the stock market in the past few weeks. When do you think we see Bitcoin behaving again as a non-correlated asset? Michael. Well, it's funny. We had this discussion earlier today between uh, the two of us. Um, during crisis times, I tend to believe, and what you see is that assets and correlation between assets go to one or at least increase to that level. So what we witnessed on Black Thursday, the 12th of March, is all assets just decreased because people were selling their risk assets for their losses on the equity markets to cover that uh, through institutionals, but also people just selling because of fear for the coronavirus. And I don't see, uh, since then we saw, we saw a bounce back up from the equity market. So we are seeing it on the crypto market. So you're seeing it on the commodity markets, which makes me believe that the correlation is still there and will remain to be there unless people start to lose their faith in the fiat currency and start to seek for other assets outside of that. So they fly away. And then you want to see gold moving up, want to see silver moving up. And that's the opportunity for Bitcoin to step in. If people seek for other assets than the USD, um, then Bitcoin has their chance, his chance to, uh, to uh, perform. Scott, what do you think? I mean, at the, at the moment, uh, I think that you both agree that the dollar is considered the best safe haven because still uh, right now people, uh, people want the dollar, want to, to, fly in, to flee into the dollar because it's a safe haven at the moment. But uh, when, so when, when do you think that this uh, mistrust towards the fiat currency will manifest itself? Well, first, the dollar has been the only safe haven asset for a long time. Um, regardless of how many they print, uh, everybody in the world needs it. Everybody in the world wants it and everybody in the world hoards it. So if we're talking about the dollar, uh, the sort of, you know, Bitcoin maximalist theory that it's going to hyperinflate soon and that Bitcoin is going to be the most valuable asset is unproven and is uh, dubious at best. If we're talking about correlation, uh, I have sort of a different take uh, than Michael on this, although I, I do agree in some part. So, I mean, we should talk about what correlation even means. It just it doesn't mean the charts kind of look the same. You know, it goes back to Markowitz and modern portfolio theory. Uh, correlation is a mathematical equation. And it, it, as he said, it goes from negative one to one. For 11 years, Bitcoin has been the only truly uncorrelated asset. It's a 0.15, zero and close to zero means not correlated. If you're at minus one, it means they're inversely correlated. If something goes up 10%, you expect the other asset to drop 10%. And if they're one, you know, one goes up 10%, the other goes up 10%. As he touched on, uh, when there's a crisis, it goes out the window and everything pushes towards a one. But actually, Bitcoin really hasn't pushed beyond a 0.5, which is still a loosely correlated asset. And we, we can also, you know, talk about correlation in general from a risk perspective, but you know, Bitcoin is a non-correlated asset because uh, we can talk about the four main kinds of assets that there are, right? Stocks, bonds, currencies, and commodities, and that's it. And they're all correlated in some way. Their value is derived from interest, interest rates, GDP, corporate earnings, whatever it is. Bitcoin doesn't derive its value from any of those things. Bitcoin derives its value from things like millennial adoption, government regulation, uh, network value, you know, things like that, but they're completely uncorrelated as far as how their value is assessed. If we're talking about price, yes, both dropped, but I think you can dig a little deeper into that as well to see that there's not really that much correlation. A March 12th Bitcoin dumped, we know that. I've already given you my theory on why it went as far as it did, but the SPX, SPX, the market didn't actually bottom until the 23rd, so nine days later. And while that was happening, Bitcoin went up 60 or 70 percent. So you can't ignore the fact that they were completely uncoupled during that time. And this has not been that long of a time. So there's a general trend of the prices being similar. And yes, I do believe, obviously, that Bitcoin is a risk off asset. And when there's a real dump on everything, it's going to dump with them. But so do gold and silver, the other quote unquote uncorrelated assets. So for me, I think that they're already in some regard decoupling. And one more important point that I have to give to everyone who thinks that they're completely correlated. If you look at the charts, Bitcoin's actually been leading the market. So like, yeah, the market opens, you know, on a Monday and it's up, but Bitcoin's been up the whole weekend. If you believe that Bitcoin is leading the U.S. stock market or is a leading indicator, I mean, that is just absurd. I've got a, you know, 
a nice villa to sell you on Pluto with lakefront property and a sunroof because it's just not even possible. So as far as I understand, the point where you disagree is uh, that uh, fiat currency, like the dollar, will eventually become hyperinflated and uh, Bitcoin will kind of uh, be seen as a, as a solution for that. Because I think that Michael has more of a positive view about it, while uh, you, Scott, seems to be quite skeptical. No, I'm not skeptical of it uh, long term, but I'm saying it shouldn't even be on your radar right now. I mean, yes, I think, and I've said this countless times, I think everyone should own some Bitcoin, even if it's just one, two, five percent of what you have in case we go full Mad Max or I am legend and the world completely melts down and we're in this apocalyptic scenario and, you know, the dollar hyper inflates and, and that's where we will be. But I, I certainly don't cheer for it. Uh, and, you know, I don't think that that is in our immediate future. I, I just don't think that that's what's coming yet. I do think that it could certainly happen, but, you know, I don't think that's going to be in the next weeks, months, even years. I do think that that could happen down the road. We've seen it all over the place. We saw it in the 30s, you know, 20s and 30s in Germany. We certainly are seeing it now in Venezuela. But the difference is that the dollar is actually the world's reserve currency. It's of not course. the same as a random currency in a random country melting down. Michael, do you, do you have anything to add? It's delusional to think that um, that the dollar will just vanish away or that it's just going into hyperinflation. That's just a, that's just a big joke. Uh, but what you should be considering and watching is what's going to happen with the inflation at some point. Um, printing an infinite amount of money it won't be sustainable. So if the inflation starts to crawl up in the next few years, then it's going to be into a problem area. And whether it's going to be uh, the dollar is remaining to be the world uh, reserve currency or whether it's going to be the Chinese yuan or it's going to be this SDR from the IMF, we don't know. We don't know what it takes for the whole crisis to just uh, just go through in which it meshes like, are we going to see helicopter money or no? Um, it's just a big guess. And until now, in the coming few years, I still believe that the dollar will be the reserve currency but hatching yourself through commodities and through Bitcoin is not a bad idea as if at some point the dollar has to be devalued, that will be through another asset. I agree 100%. Pretty clear. So let's talk about one of the most important events coming up soon, the uh, Bitcoin halving. So according to popular blockchain educator Ivan Antek, Whales will be trading against retail traders during the Bitcoin halving. When you sell into a whole liquidity event where, where a lot of retail is trying to get in, well, then the price doesn't crash as much. So it's another important thing to realize that probably whales will be trading against, against retail during the halving. The logic is that retail traders will buy into the event, hoping for the price to pump immediately after the halving. At the same time, whales will be taking advantage of the surge in liquidity to sell large amounts without causing slippage, so without causing the price to crash too abruptly. Do you agree with this forecast? Um, I think that's possible. I think it's almost equally possible that, you know, aliens come down from Mars and are horny for Bitcoin and hack all of our wallets and steal our Bitcoin in advance of the halving. To be honest, I think that's one of the stupider things I've ever heard. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, it's a complete tin hat theory. It reminds me of the Wall Street bonuses and Chinese New Year and everyone's going to sell Bitcoin to pay their taxes and every ridiculous narrative that we've heard. There's literally no evidence that that would happen. Uh, it's just a random idea. I, I don't even understand why that would happen. First of all, that's giving retail way too much credit. Retail's not a very big space. They don't have money. They're a bunch of broke kids in their mom's basements. These are not people that are going to move the market. They're not going to be buying. First of all, people are scared of Bitcoin. The, you know, the greed and fear index is still extreme fear. I don't really think that people view the having as some bullish event. It's been talked about for years. Price has dumped here in advance. We're in a complete global economic crisis. I just don't think there's anyone out there who's like, I got to get Bitcoin in front of the having. If they are, they're certainly not buying enough for a whale to sell without slippage. I really think that that's absurd. And uh, I wouldn't give that any credence at all. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So you're basically saying that there won't be enough uh, buying movements from the retail sector uh, before the halving. Like, so you don't think that there are so many people that are actually going to FOMO in in correspondence to the halving? 
not an, I mean, listen, whales move this market, retail maybe jumps on board and rides the very back of the train, but their money is, you know, makes no difference. When, when price dumped on March 12th, it wasn't because everybody simultaneously decided they needed to get out of Bitcoin. It was because a few speculators who needed cash went to the most liquid place that they could, which was Bitcoin. You couldn't even sell a bond on March 12th. There were no bids on the bond books. I mean, think about that. Literally, the Fed had to come in and buy all the bonds that people were trying to sell. So if you were a huge operator and you had exposure to Bitcoin, you had to sell your Bitcoin because you literally couldn't even sell other assets. They were illiquid. So, I mean, we know for a fact that 70% of Bitcoin has not moved. Let's say 5% is lost. So we're talking about 25% of all the Bitcoin is the world is what's actually moving price. And it's a few people who own that and decided to sell. Retail has very, very, very little impact on this market, I believe. So yes, I don't think there's enough retail volume or FOMO in the universe for you know that to be enough for whales to sell in large amounts without slippage. Also, I just think the halving is like, it's yesterday's news, man. I mean, it's a bullish event fundamentally, but I, you know, I don't see anyone that's got like a huge hard on for it at this point. Okay, let's see. Let's see what uh, Michael thinks about this issue. Uh, what do you think about Ivan on tax uh, speculation? Yeah, it's uh, it's just one of those stories. I mean, I don't really listen to any of these theories. They just don't make sense. It's speculation based on. Uh, nothing basically I just want to watch the charts and that's providing me the data that I have need to have to trade um, usually news is priced in already um, as we're always behind and there's always inside info uh, people are saying that the crypto markets are manipulated but uh, we are just witnessing the biggest manipulation of our lifetime on the stock market so I just trade the charts and what I feel like with the halving could be that we still see some slight rally coming into the next few weeks, just so close to the event, which makes it a uh, buy the rumor, sell the news event, which has been with the uh, previous halving on Bitcoin, which you see on the Bitcoin cash halving, Litecoin halvings, they all have that, after which the price just crashed down because people start to realize that the actual event on the moment itself doesn't make any sense it's a big non-event but long term and structurally after that fundamentally it is a bullish scenario so um, yeah short term i just think it's a big non-event and doesn't really matter but long term it could kick off a bull market what's the best way for you guys to trade the, the halving if uh, there is any specific way to trade it uh scott I agree 100% with Michael that I'm a chart trader. The beauty of uh, Bitcoin and crypto is that you don't have to think of any of this stuff. You don't need a narrative. People want a narrative, but you don't need a narrative. It's all in the charts. You can look there. So I can tell you a day before or a week before what I'm seeing in the chart and what I'm going to do, but it's not going to be because of the having narrative. Personally, I won't trade it any different than I trade any other day. And that's what makes Bitcoin the most fun and amazing asset to trade because you can actually do it technically you know, looking at a stock chart, come on, you know, every 50 MA and 200 MA and retracement level that anybody had drawn on a stock chart completely died, you know, in, in a matter of a week or two. And it's just really hard to, you know, when, when you have to think about things like I said before, interest rates or corporate earnings or all these things, you know, quarter, quarterly earnings and, and all the things that give stocks and actual valuation none of that exists in bitcoin so we get to just look at a chart try to identify on that chart where the whales are going to try to inflict the most pain and uh, act accordingly so if they decide to you know do something i think we'll see it on the chart and we can uh, behave accordingly thank you michael and scott for the cool discussion that was very interesting and uh, thanks for being with us my pleasure thank you so much for having me thank you and you guys, if you enjoyed the show, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to our channel. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe and hodl.